He has chosen a title that makes us wonder, what does that mean? The internet again. You'll explain. Hello, Thanks. Magnus. Thanks. Welcome. Thank you. Well, hello, everyone. So, uh, who am I? I'm, I've spent 35 years in international ICT, basically. Uh, I've been with great American companies like Apple Computers. I've been an investor, and since about six years, I've devoted myself completely to IoT. I just love the opportunities connecting things to internet creates. And that's what I do for a living. I'm an independent, and I'm basically advising startups and operators and enterprises on how to go about and how to utilize the opportunities. To me, M2M, IoT, telematics, all these things doesn't matter. It's just about connecting things to the internet. So no discussions about what this means or that means. Sometimes I talk about M2M because that's what operators do. Sometimes I talk about the internet of things because other people do. It doesn't matter. It's a great idea. It's not a new idea. We have been connecting things for 30 years. The only source of wisdom of how IoT will develop, I think, is internet. If we think about what happened when internet the first time happened, we connected people and companies to the internet. It started off by talking about connectivity. The ISPs were the kings of the roads, the coolest companies on earth. Nobody wants to be an ISP today, because as soon as things are connected, it doesn't really matter too much. So after that, instead of sending emails to each other or surfing the internet, enterprises figured out that they could become much more efficient using the internet and the opportunities created. That's what I call it. They, they started to create operational values. Instead of sending out printed price lists to people, they could publish them on the web and save money and time. Simply like that. But then came some people who figured out new opportunities, new ways of doing things, the more innovative part of, of internet. And they, they talked about strategic values. This is how our brand can actually change. We can go from like our, our friend from, um, from the tire industry here said we, we were rubbers and now we do telematics. You can innovate your, your company, your industry, or you can do things completely different. This is when companies like Google and Amazon, this is when they were created, just being innovative using the new opportunities. We will go through exactly the same phases again with IoT, but it's going to be faster. Well, I actually invested in two companies 2001 in M2M, which was terrible. Uh, it was the worst investment I ever did. But I was in love with the idea. I didn't see that the market was not mature enough. So I decided to figure out exactly when this is going to happen. And, and I came to the conclusion 2010 that now it's time to jump into this bandwagon. The reason was actually that I think companies, rich companies, poor companies, enterprises, everybody, is sharing the same issues today. It's about sustainability. We all share that issue. It's about safety and security. And it's about efficiency. Like in Sweden, healthcare has to be more efficient because we can't cope with the service to the people in Sweden. Or a, a car manufacturer has to be more competitive because of the competition. But all of us share this issue of security, sustainability, and efficiency. And that, to me, are the three deliverables of IoT. If you want to go into IoT, start with f look for some of those advantages in a business process or something like that. Now, technology-wise, as you all know, we have come down in pricing. Things are really affordable and easy to work with today. The operators have, have, have services that are quite easy to roll out in hundreds of thousands instead of 10. And, and uh, in general, everything has become good enough to, to create the IoT applications we want. Now, there are good signs that this will happen a bit big. There's traditional signs like consolidation in an industry. That's a very good sign that the industry believes something will happen. There's also uh, collaboration and alliances. If you don't know what to do, you always start an alliance or a partnership. So there's a lot of those happening. We have already passed the connectivity side. You know, people refer to 50 billion devices for many years. That is purely focusing on connectivity. 
It is absolutely not of relevance. What is 50 billion divided? How much is 50 billion anyway? I mean, to me, that is really a sign of focus on connectivity. We have passed that already, and we are now working on the data. The data is, again, like last time with the internet, it's, it's the gold of IoT. Everything that has to do with data has to be considered carefully by anyone involved. It, it, it spans everything from privacy and, and security to bis critical business value or which role will we play in a certain business in the future. You should never give away your data without thinking very hard before you do that. So to me, IoT is a customer-driven market. It's not about standards and alliances and all of that. It's about customers wanting to solve a problem. And every single IoT application is very complicated. And that's why it takes a lot of time. Because first of all, you have to catch the data somewhere. And then you have to do something clever with the data. And then you have to distribute the data to a system or an app or a, a red light that flashes or something. Then the business value is created. So it's a long way to go until you can actually deliver some use of IoT. It's, it's actually in, processes, uh, in business processes and decision making that most of the value of IT will show up. Whether it's a hospital or production plant or something, it doesn't matter. That's what you have to look for. It's really hard to visualize, though, that if, what if we connect all our tractors here? What would happen? People cannot really. We are human beings. We cannot really see the value coming out. So you have to prototype. You have to get going. You have to leave Excel and PowerPoint aside and try. Try software, hardware, try it, see what happens. And then you can start to see what will happen to my business. Try, prototype, try, prototype. That's the major message to me. And if you do this, you have to work modern. You have to work agile. This is how we develop all the other applications today. You have to find a way to develop IT applications in an agile fashion. And also, don't forget the mobiles, because it's not enough today to create something on the computer. You just have to make your stuff mobile as well. This is the complex solution. Look, I, I say it, it spans three industries, but it's actually probably 10. Collecting the data, that's all about sensors, networks, hubs, infrastructure, mobile operator, all this kind of stuff is only one part. That's where we collect data. And to manage the data, that's also a couple of different industries. But that's all about big data analysis, uh, data mining, open APIs, integrity issues, all of those kind of things. And then distributing the, the, the information that we're looking for, that's also a number of different industries. It could be science and light bulbs and apps and SAP systems. It's really hard to make all these things working out to deliver the value. This is a famous picture from Beecham, just showing one thing, how incredibly fragmented the world of IoT will be. Because each of those, you can't read all of that. If you're a baker in Milan, I don't care about all the rest. I want something that helps me make better bread. You know, I'm in the end of one of those silos. It's going to be very fragmented. Everything is wrong. People want it to be standardized, big, efficient. It's not going to be that way. I'm absolutely convinced. There will be building blocks and infrastructure and things like that which will make it more efficient. But the whole solution will always be driven by industry or specific need or something like that. Examples, you have seen all this. There are billions of things already connected. And one can argue why we need all of those things. What is the new change? Is the new watch from Apple, is that changing the world? Absolutely not. It's just an accessory to the big picture. And, and it's easy to get in love with a small device and then try to take the data from that all the way through the cloud and everything down to an app. But if you develop stovepipes like that, it will not work because the same customer will take data from something else the next day. So it, it has to be carefully designed and architectured. But there is a point here. Every single IoT application involves hardware. We just have to get going with hardware again, guys. And you know the makers movement in the US. People believe it's bigger impact on society than internet, which I don't believe is right. But it's a huge impact that we can all of a sudden create our own hardware easily. We can buy Raspberries and Arduinos and, and BLE devices for almost nothing and to, to get going. But we have to start to do hardware in Europe now. 
I think in order to simplify the road for anyone from, from the sensors all the way to the application, you should go and look for what I call service enablers. And that's why the strange name of my, my alliance is Service Enabler Alliance. At, s service enablers, they're the people who are industry specialists one way or another, and they have, let's say, half a product. They have platforms, they have references, they, they don't start from scratch. I think service enablers is really the key if you want to get going rapidly to a solution. Then when you know exactly what you want, you might decide to spin in the whole thing and make it at home, if you like, or you can remain with the service enabler of some sort. These service enablers, they bring expertise and tools. They have done it maybe 65 times before for customers similar like you or for applications similar like the ones you are looking for. It's a fast, affordable, and very straightforward way to get going. So I started to collect service enablers in Sweden three years ago now. We have an, a loose alliance of 38 companies right now. Each of those are specializing in something. Oh, you want to do forestry? Well, turn to Episcope. They, they work with the forest industry. They use a lot of devices and protocols and software, which is the same like Springworks, who work with automotives. But they have the expertise of the specific application, the specific customers. This is, I think this is a very important way forward for this to become an industry. My alliance is also sponsored by all the big guys because they understand now that this is the way forward. So to conclude, I think the, the internet of everything is not something that will happen. It is happening right now. If you want to play a role here, you have to get going now. I always said that the, the only key difference to when internet happened last time and now is that ignorance is not a good excuse this time. Everybody can see what is coming. And if you don't act now, you run the risk of getting into problems later. So don't wait. Start now. Put aside Excel and PowerPoint. Stop talking. Do some tape and glue some of the sensors to your gears and devices and get going. Prototype using an a, a agile type development platform. There are several in the market. I like Everything Studio a lot. It's an open source, basic platform. And, and remember that the data, that's the gold. Everything else you can buy or use or outsource or in, so it doesn't matter. But you have to really make sensible decisions about your data. Because I am absolutely convinced that a couple of years from now, privacy will be a huge issue. Already when Google bought Nest, you could see on the internet, people said, I smashed my nest right away. I don't want Google to know what I'm doing in my home. That kind of issues will happen. And many of the protocols and architectures we use today are simply not good enough. They don't take care of those issues. The same goes for security in general. How many people do you know who can secure a transaction all the way down to an embedded, uh, embedded uh, system? Very few, because the tools and the tricks we use today are simply too big as a footprint for small micro components. So, specialist service enablers are key to the success if you're going to get going. And finally, I want to, to, to tell you that we're opening a new uh, hardware co working space in Stockholm just to deliver on the issue of we have to get going using our own hardware now. We have to get to that point. Otherwise, Europe's role in this IoT you know, phenomenal growth, whatever opportunity that I can see, we will miss out. Because the guys with the hardware will actually be key in all discussions, regardless of what you think today. I, th I see too many software platforms dealing with this and that. That is going to be very difficult to just have a software platform. We have hundreds or thousands of them already. And IoT is becoming an international market very, very rapidly. And as soon as the, the, the boundaries around the country disappear, well, then you have to meet hundreds of similar companies. Then you better know what you do. You better be really good at something very specific. I'm also working for EITICT Labs. I want to mention that. So we have an idea challenge. Uh, we had one last year for IoT, and we have another one this year. So watch out for that. I'm actually charging that for EITICT Labs. That's it. Mange tak. Mange tak. Thank Mange you. Tak. Mange, <laughs> how can you live as a consultant if you give all your good advice for free in that, that, those sort of uh, talks? I mean, that was a very intense crash, uh, I, boot, I, camp, boot camp. And, uh, I have a wife who works hard at okay. the bank. Oh, so excellent. That's where I paid my bill. Oh, that, that's excellent. I got that. Um, 
Since you, you were talking about that hardware um, co-working co um, uh, co space in, in Stockholm, uh, the, the part of the country of this stupid is China. Um, the guys in Shenzhen, I heard, are fairly good in that. Sure. Are they um, sort of ahead now, ahead of the curve now? How's come that? Well, 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 well I th I th when you come to mass manufacturing, you know, that will probably always happen uh, for many years. But, you know, owning your own design, that is key. The designers, they, want, they don't want to do gorgeous products. And then when they come back, they look like everybody else. So I think it's getting control of your own hardware is really important. Okay, and where do I do that? When I'm a startup and then I need... When you're a startup, you have to start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. This okay. has to be... In the, I mean, again, I, I worked nine years for Apple. I, I am obviously not neutral to Apple. <laughs> But I think there's a good lesson to learn and how they actually marry software and hardware together in gorgeous products. Yeah. And how to do that? <laughs> What's the trick? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've forgotten. <laughs> okay. Got that. No, it's collaboration. It's a lot about collaboration. You have to get a lot of people around the table and share and, you know, that's why I think a good working place for startups and big companies, which we actually gather in our house, is mm -hmm. a great start. All right. Mange tak, once again, tak, Magnus, thank you. that was a great talk, great, thanks. and uh, not only inspiring, but also very practical.